So in the previous video, we discussed what is stochastic gradient descent, uh, where we uh, replaced the real gradient by a stochastic oracle, of which expectation is equal to the true gradient vector or value. And the convergence property of SGD very depend on the variance sigma square. Okay, so when sigma square is very high, it is very difficult to guarantee nice performance because there are too much noise. The stochastic gradient descent algorithm can be applied to mirror descent algorithm as well, the stochastic gradient. So, what is mirror descent? We already discussed in week 5 or oh, week 4, I guess. Yes. The mirror descent algorithm can deal with non Euclidean space. That was benefit of mirror descent approach. Right. So, we can define the mirror descent algorithm using stochastic gradient like this. Let's say g tilde x. T is um, has the expectation belong to the subgradient set at point x t, and with this stochastic gradient, we can define the mirror descent approach using this Bregman derivative. Okay, so this is called stochastic mirror descent algorithm. Then. As before, we can guarantee some convergence property of mirror descent algorithm with step size gamma equal to R over B square 2, 2 over capital T. Here, R comes from the, the diameter of your constraint set uh, with respect to the pi function. And B is the it's kind of smoothness or the variance. Actually, B define both. So, which basically bounds the the g tilde x norm square. Okay. So, when B is very small, then g tilde always is very small. So, we can easily guarantee nice behavior. On the other hand, if B is very high, then G tilde can be very large and or the variance of G tilde can be very large. So we have uh, in trouble to guarantee something like the stochastic gradient descent algorithm with high sigma square. Okay, so let's go back to the mirror descent with um, original gradient. The true gradient vector. So that that is the result. That was the result in Bubeck's textbook. So roughly the result basically the same, almost the same step size, and almost the same guarantee. But here we assume low strongly convex pi function and ellipsis continuous objective function f. But now we have one strongly convex and um, b square boundedness on expectation of g tilde norm square. The result also basically almost the same. We have rb square to 2 over capital T upper bound, whereas in the previous case we have rl square to 2 over low capital T. But here we replace low by just constant one. So if we use a um, low strongly convex condition, then we have low in the denominator like before. So that basically the same. And we replace ellipsis continuity by uh, b square upper bound. So we basically have the same result. So, so basically it comes from that the fact that the proof of theorem 4.2 is very very robust you know very uh, robust to the noise so you can reuse almost every part of the proof for theorem 4.2 so the proof concept and proof strategy basically the same so i recommend to read the textbook 
And if you have any question on the proof, then please let me know and post any, any question and any comment to our channel. Okay? So I'll skip the proof. That is just um, almost the same. The, the important part is this. The smoothness of objective function does not bring any acceleration for general stochastic oracle. With uh, alpha strongly convex and beta smoothness objective function, basically the smoothness was the key to you know, speed up or boosting your gradient algorithm. But with stochastic gradient algorithm, the profit from smoothness will be gone. We cannot use the benefit of smoothness. Okay, so all the approaches that utilize the smoothness and speed up the conversions does not hold anymore with stochastic gradient descent algorithm. Okay, why? One key component to show the conversion speed with smooth function was this fx t minus fx t plus 1 is greater than or equal to 1 over 2 beta times gradient of fx t norm square. So we can always guarantee that x t is greater than or equal to fx t plus 1. So we can uh, constantly, consistently decrease your objective function value with this margin, and the margin is proportional to your gradient vector, the true gradient vector. That, that was the key component, key ingredient to show every um, smooth function convergence behavior. Okay? But that is not true anymore. That is the key part of stochastic gradient descent algorithm. Even we cannot say that fxt is greater than or equal to fxt plus 1. We cannot guarantee our one step update can decrease your objective function. Okay? That is the key. So when you draw um, the single parameter or single input parameter case, this is very easy to understand. Uh, using smooth function and step size 1 over beta, what we can say is from any point x, the gradient with step size 1 over beta never cross the optimal point x star. Your update length always less than x minus x star. Okay? Your update length always shorter than the distance to the optimal point x, x star. So there is never any oscillation with step size 1 over beta. That is why we set 1 over beta as the optimal step size for gradient descent algorithm when you have beta smooth function. And that was the key ingredient to show every convergence behavior of beta smooth function. But with stochastic gradient descent algorithm, basically the expectation still, still 1 over beta times expectation of your GT value share the same behavior, same property. But the problem is, at each instance, we do not compute the expectation, but we use one random realization of GT. Okay? So in some bad case, the update can be this point. In some case, the update can be moved like this. Especially when you have very high variance stochastic gradient descent algorithm, the update can be this, 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 this. Okay? So you never can guarantee any consistent decreasing behavior with nice margin. Okay? 
When you don't have any knowledge, when you compute the gradient, with alpha strongly convex and beta smooth, what was nice, you can always guarantee fxt is greater than fxt plus 1 with margin this and the margin proportional to gradient of fxt normed square. And with alpha strongly convex, this normed square, gradient normed square, also, also bounding the fxt minus fx star, the, the gap between the current point and the optimal point. That can guarantee you exponentially fast convergence of simple gradient descent algorithm with step size 1 of beta. But with stochastic gradient descent algorithm, you cannot say this because of the noise. The noise can go this, go this, go this, and so on, especially sigma square is very high. That's why you have to be very careful to control the step size. And that's why in practice you have to use very small step size, especially when you learn a lot of iteration. Okay? Okay, CRM 6.3 also say very similar thing. Um, when you have mirror descent algorithm with one strongly convex and this diameter, and your objective function is convex and beta smooth, then with this step size, you can guarantee this. But when you look at this, the upper bound, the convergence property, basically, the same. Okay. Right. So in practice, we usually use mini batch stochastic gradient descent algorithm. We update xt plus one using xt minus step size times one over m, the batch size, times summation from i one to m. So some over whole data point in one mini batch, and then compute the stochastic gradient. Okay, the stochastic gradient is essentially just gradient of f i. Okay, <clears throat> then basically, m one over m times summation g tilde i x. This expectation is equal to gradient of fx. And also, you can control the variance sigma square by the mini batch size. When you increase the mini batch size, What will happen? You can decrease the sigma scale. You can decrease the variance. Okay. So reducing variance is very very important. Okay, so in the previous slide, I explained one simple way to reduce the variance: increasing the batch size, increasing the mini batch size. When you increase the mini batch size, you can decrease the sigma square. Okay, and when you decrease the sigma square, what will happen in the previous video? The sigma square is very important to understand your convergence behavior. And when you have high sigma square, you have high error. When you have low sigma square, you have very tiny estimation error after the t number of iteration. So when you increase the mini batch size m, basically you can decrease the sigma square with the rate of 1 over m. So you can decrease this term by factor of 1 over m. That is fine. But very interesting, one another factor is 
When you increase the mini batch size, essentially you increase the learning time. You have to compute m different gradient vector and then sum up them. Okay. So basically it is the same. You increase the total number of iteration, the, the SGD iteration m times. And you keep the the number of iterations of your SGD but increase the batch size, mini batch size by factor of m. They share the same computation time. I see. Okay? So you when you increase the the total learning time, basically you can increase this factor. Okay? But you know, in this case, decreasing sigma square by factor of one over m is much better than increasing the total iteration of SGD with a factor of m. Okay, that that is essentially very interesting behavior.